Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. This is actually my first time speaking at the conference, so fingers crossed. Uh, my name is Marius. I work as a web and business developer for Superstereo. So I'm working both on the technical side and the business side in different projects. Uh, what I would like to talk to you about today is how we can improve the illusion of speed uh, to create a better user experience for the users. And this is really something which has been talked about and advocated about a lot uh, for many years now in diff at different conferences and tech talks. But it's still something I think is very relevant and important as um, the user's uh, user experience uh, is getting more and more important. So during this talk, I will give you um, first a little bit of context and background about the topic before we dig into uh, some of the techniques on how you could improve the illusion of speed. Uh, since we only have 10, 15 minutes here, uh, we can't dig very deep into it. Uh, so you're welcome to reach out to me after the talk, either on Slack or Twitter or LinkedIn, if you have any questions. So, as I said, uh, for the last couple of years, the users are becoming more and more demanding what they expect from the user experience, both on mobile and on web and desktop. And they really are comparing your website's user experience, not only to your competitors, uh, but to the best in class companies as Facebook, Google, Apple, and Microsoft. Because that's the user experience they are using most of the time, maybe 78% of the time. And that's what they actually are expecting uh, of you. And if we look into uh, what we call the UX hierarchy, which is a way to uh, tell which factors is most important in user experience, we see that speed, page speed, is not only the most important factor, but is much more important than any other factors. And that's really because it doesn't really matter if you have a stunning graphical design, great content, or if the page is really easy to use, if the users really don't care to stick around to see it because it takes too long time to load. There is a lot of research also showing that slow uh, web pages uh, decreases conversions. So since we know that um, speed is the most important factor in user experience, we all need to have a more on how we as humans are perceiving time and speed and how we can analyze that. So usually uh, we divide time into two solid categories. We have objective time and psychological time. So when we talk about objective time, that's usually something we can measure. Uh, either with our stopwatch or US developers are using uh, Lighthouse or web page tester and tools. Uh, but what we see is that the objective time is usually quite different from uh, how humans are perceiving time. And we, when we talk about users' perception of time, we are actually talking about psychological time. And this is what I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into through this talk. So let's start off with um, an example. Uh, a couple of years back, there was an airport in the US which retrieved quite a high number of complaints from many of the travelers that they needed to wait quite a long time for their bags at baggage claim. So the airport started a project uh, looking at the actual speed and trying to improve uh, the efficiency of the bag process, uh, which we also usually do on web page projects. Uh, so they added different baggage handlers, they added more staff, and they tried to make the entire process really efficient. But what they saw was that it didn't actually help. The complaints still came in and didn't decrease at all. So then they started to think of the perception part of the problem. And what they actually did, and I think this is a little bit because they increased the length of the walk from the gate to the baggage claim by six times. So the people actually needed to work much longer. And all of the complaints suddenly stopped. And that's because you kept the people occupied while waiting. They wasn't just standing uh, with the baggage claim board waiting for the bags to come. They were in activity during the same waiting time. So the total amount of time from the gate to the customer got the bag was the same. 
but the perception of that time went down. And the, the mistake that Houston Airport did in the beginning is something that, as I said, many web pages often do as well, that they are focusing all of their efforts on improving the page speed uh, while totally forgetting um, the perception and how that affects the user experience. And many of you are, I guess, developers, and you don't maybe say that, why should I care about this? This is the UX designer's responsibility, or maybe the front end developer's responsibility. Well, I would say that that is not true because it really doesn't matter how good your cloud setup is, or your database connections, or application architecture, how good your hardware is, your back end code. If the user perceives your applications uh, as slow, and that will give you a crap user experience, right? So if you're working on any of these layers, you should also always have the user in focus. And I think uh, Halge was uh, on the first talk, you mentioned this as well. So how can, how can we actually improve the perceived speed? If we go back to the airport example, what we did there was that we moved the users from a state where they were standing waiting for the bags into a state where they did an activity during the waiting time. And this is a quite common and easy technique to use. And that's that we are trying to move the users from what we call the passive waiting mode into an active waiting mode. We are trying to decrease the time in passive waiting. On a web page, that could usually be that instead of you showing a spinner or, or a progress bar, you could uh, give a small game or you could give a questionnaire and so on. So trying to get your users look more like uh, the guy on the right and less uh, like the girl on the left. Another technique is something we call preemptive start. And uh, I hope most of you are already doing this because it's have been for been around for many years and it's quite common. But that's really about loading assets and resources before the user realizes it. A good example for that is if you have a registration form which has multiple steps. If the user are on one specific step where they fill in some information you know that most likely the user would go to the next step after filling out the form. So you could already now start preloading assets on the next step. So the rendering time will go down when the user uh, moves on. The opposite technique is something we call early completion. And that's really to show the user something before it's ready or finish loading. And this is uh, used uh, mostly on video streaming, right? Because uh, the video starts before the entire video is finished loading. You also have the progressive images, which is uh, used by Pinterest, retail e-commerce sites, where you have a lot of product images, where you start showing a pixelated blurry image and progressively show the high resolution image. And both of these two techniques are quite common, but um, not all of them, not all of you are actually using them on the web pages. Uh, another technique is animations. And animations is not really just uh, to try to create a funny, uh, fancy um, UI uh, stuff on a web page. It can actually be used to improve the perception of performance. A good example of that is something we did um, uh, in uh, one of our clients with the airline industry, where you have quite heavy backend systems with the API calls, which takes quite a lot of time. So what you can do in the front end is that you can hide the fact that the API calls and data fetching is taking a lot of time uh, by using animations and transitions in the layout. So instead of showing a spinner or a progress bar, you animate different elements in the layout to hide the fact that the backend is using a lot of time. The next technique is something we call optimistic design. And that's really about hiding the truth from the user. Uh, 
Uh, and the idea about this is that we give the user a feedback on what should have happened before it actually have in the system. For example, if we have an incomplete task in the system, is presented to the user as completed. Uh, another example in this is the Instagram like button. Because if you click on that, it feels quite instant, right? But what actually happened is that the like itself is stored in the database at, at a later stage. So if the request to the backend systems fail, the user will never know because they prioritized to have the instant feedback to the user instead of waiting for the callback. There's a lot of other uh, different techniques out there, and we really don't have time to go through them all today. Uh, but we have something called precognition, which is really a way to predict the future, try to predicting what the user's next move is. And this could easily be, do, be done on, for example, touch uh, devices with sensors where we have something we call time to glass, because we have different hardware limitations. We can utilize that. Um, can utilize that uh, to improve the perception of speed. And this is something which actually, actually have been done by both Apple and Microsoft on iOS and on the Surface tablets and desktop uh, before. And we have skeleton UI, uh, which you should be careful about because if you do it wrongly, um, it doesn't really help the perceived performance. You have spinners versus progress balls. You should actually never use spinners if um, it is longer waiting times. You should try to use progress bars or animations in the layout. Right? And there's a lot of other tips here as well as uh, using the right CSS properties for animation. You need to know when you are using JavaScript, when you're using CSS. Um, you need to do you use right easing and so on. So there's a lot of tips here. Take a uh, Snipping to your snipping tool and screenshot of this, uh, and we can have a talk about it later. But what I really want you to remember for this talk is do not forget the users. Nobody really cares how fast your website is, just how fast it feels. Thank you. <laughs>